I'm originally from Thessaloniki, Greece. Going back to my teenage years, I was always interested in the biomedical field. I was always debating between dental and medical school. It was the fact that dentistry would always offer me more flexibility in my future professional life. I completed my five-year training in, uh, in dental school in Greece. At the same time, I was working as a dental assistant and hygienist kind of in my uh, three last years of dental education with a periodontist that had graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in the US. So I was given the opportunity to learn so much more about periodontology. I learned about you know using American textbooks and learn a lot about techniques that he had recently explored in the US in his training. He kind of motivated me to once I complete my studies to move to the US and uh, apply and do residency in the U.S. This is the academic part of the building. There are seven floors of labs and academic offices. I would say 20% of my time is devoted to teaching still, uh, either didactic or clinical teaching, but the majority of my time is devoted to uh, clinical science, to clinical research. Now in my research line, I mainly focus on the uh, treatment of uh, periodontal diseases. In addition, I have some administrative role as a director of the Dental Clinical Research Center here at UConn, uh, where I, I manage the center and I try to motivate uh, direct and mentor the young junior clinical researchers. I have a soft spot for students that will come to me and say, for example, I'm really interested in public health. And I'm like, huh, that's, that's great. So tell me what, 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 what you want to solve. What, what's the direction that you want to take? I like students that express their curiosity out loud and they have a question that they ask for help and a feedback. I think it's important for them to be curious because this promotes learning. Have deep pockets? Or? There, there were several deep pockets, yeah, like yeah. five. Given that the demographics of every graduating class for the past decade have changed and women are really highly represented in these classes, almost with 50% or even sometimes more, the ADA has already been making tremendous steps towards improving diversity in the community. It is important because our population, the population that we serve is diverse, right? You want to have an organization that captures the gender diversity, captures the ethnic and racial diversity, and captures people with uh, special needs. To be able to serve these communities, we need to really, as an organization, represent these communities. Because she said, according to this data, the statistics cannot be applied. Because to compare perimplantitis and survival, we need to compare it. I truly believe in organized industry. I think that that can serve the uh, community better. I find that the ADA is the largest professional organization that has not only impact in the US, but internationally. I do think that it's important that the mission of the ADA is, of course, supporting the membership, but equally supporting the, the um, evidence-based delivery of uh, dental care to the nation. But your, your goal today is to make sure that the, the tooth is, the area is, the periodontal disease free and uh -huh. care is free, uh -huh. right? Yeah. So, now so what I would like to say to the new generation, the new dentists, is stay curious. There is no stupid question. I think it's really, really important to stay curious. I'm really excited uh, about the future of dentistry being really directed by innovation and discovery, being evidence-based and, you know, at the end of the day, really representing our communities.